What is an S corporation? For federal income tax purposes, a corporation generally is treated as a separate entity apart from its shareholders. Income earned by a corporation is taxed to it and distributions from a corporation either as dividends or in liquidation are included in the shareholders taxable incomes. Meanwhile, a partnership generally is not treated as a taxable entity. Instead, income earned by a partnership, whether distributed or not, is taxed to the partners and distributed from the partnership generally as tax-free. Subchapter S of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 allows certain qualified corporations to elect to be relieved from corporate level taxation and to pass the corporate items of taxable income and loss through to the shareholders of the corporation. Thus, a corporation that elects subchapter S status, an S corporation, and its shareholders generally are treated more like a partnership and its partners than a C corporation and its shareholders for federal income tax purposes. The election does not inhibit the shareholders' limited liability protection provided by local law. In order to make an election to be treated as an S corporation, a corporation must meet certain requirements primarily regarding its capital structure and the identity of its shareholders. Other entities, primarily limited liability companies, may achieve similar tax treatment and limited liability results without having to meet the requirements of Subchapter S of the Internal Revenue Code. Subchapter S was first enacted in 1958 in order to remove tax considerations from choice of entity decisions for some taxpayers and provide tax relief for small businesses. Since 1958, Subchapter S has been amended several times in order to more closely align the treatment of S corporations and partnerships. Moreover, other changes to the code have had an effect on a number of Subchapter S elections. Eligibility A small business corporation may elect to be an S corporation. A small business corporation is a domestic corporation which is not an ineligible corporation and which does not have 1. More than 35 shareholders 2. As a shareholder a person other than an estate or certain trusts that is not an individual 3. A non-resident alien as a shareholder and 4 more than one class of stock. For this purpose, a husband and wife are treated as one shareholder. An ineligible corporation is one that is a member of an affiliated group, a bank, domestic savings and loan association, mutual savings bank, or certain cooperative bank, an insurance company, a section 936 corporation, or a DISC or a former DISC. Trusts that are eligible to own S Corporation stock include Grantor Trust, Testamentary Trust, and Qualified Subchapter S Trusts, QSSTs. A QSST is a trust, the terms of which require that all distributions of the trust may be made to only one beneficiary, who must be a U.S. citizen or resident. Election, Revocation, and Termination In order to be effective, an election to be treated as an S corporation must be made during the first two and a half months of the taxable year. An election made at later is effective for the following taxable year. All shareholders must consent to the initial election. The election is effective until termination. The consent of new shareholders is not required. 
An election may be terminated upon revocation by shareholders holding more than one half of the shares of the corporation. A revocation made during the first two and a half months of the taxable year is effective for that year. A revocation made later is effective for the following taxable year. S corporation status may also be terminated if the corporation ceases to qualify as a small business corporation. In such case, the termination is effective on and after the date of cessation. Finally, an election terminates if an S corporation with subchapter C earnings and profits has passive investments income that exceeds 25% of gross receipts for three consecutive taxable years. If S corporation status is terminated, a subsequent election cannot generally be made for five taxable years. The Secretary of Treasury has the authority to waive certain inadvertent terminations. Effect of election upon the corporation. In general, an S corporation is not subject to corporate tax. Rather, taxable income or loss of the corporation is computed in the same manner as in the case of an individual, and the income is passed through to the shareholders. Special rules apply to C corporations that elect S corporation status. Former C corporations are subject to corporate level tax on the recapture of LIFO benefits, investment tax credit recapture, certain built in gains, and certain passive investment income. The rules of subchapter C generally apply to an S corporation and its shareholders. Thus, for example, a sole shareholder may make tax-free contributions to appreciated property of his or her S corporation. However, for purposes of subchapter C, an S corporation in its capacity as a shareholder is treated as an individual. For purposes of applying certain employee fringe benefit and foreign source income rules, the S corporation is treated as a partnership. An S corporation must use as its taxable year the calendar year or any other accounting period for which the corporation establishes a business purpose to the satisfaction of the Secretary of Treasury. Effect of election upon the shareholders. All S corporation items of income, loss, deduction, or credit that could affect the tax liability of an individual generally are passed through to shareholders on a pro rata basis as of the last day of the S corporation's taxable year. Thus, as in the case of partnerships, entity level items such as capital gains and losses, components of investment activity, charitable contributions, tax credits, foreign source income, as well as ordinary income and loss from trade or business activities are separately stated and passed through to shareholders. Unlike partnerships though, special allocations are not provided for shareholders. Pro rata allocations to S corporation items are generally made on a per day, per share basis, regardless of when during the year an activity having a tax effect may have actually taken place. The aggregate amount of losses and deductions taken into account by a shareholder for a taxable year cannot exceed that shareholder's adjusted basis of his or her S corporation stock and the adjusted basis of any indebtedness of the S corporation to the shareholder. Any disallowed losses or deductions are carried over indefinitely.